What's up guys and welcome back to the Commander's Lair, it's Joey here again, not with another budget brew but with the actual non-budget deck. Uh, this is the first and one of the only proper non-budget decks I'm ever going to post, because uh, I do love budget, however I do love this deck and I wanted to share it with everyone. Um, so I have another deck that I might end up doing, although that one's still only about 150-ish dollars. This one's, this deck here, my Corvold deck, is 450 dollars, round about, I think it's a little less at the time of recording. Um, it's my most expensive deck. Uh, a little bit of a kind of backstory as to why I'm doing this is because I got into the format in about 2018 when I started playing Magic again. I got the Sahili Artifact Precon, or th maybe 2019, something around there. Got the Sahili Artifact Precon, and then I wanted to build my own deck. I spent like 15 hours making an Omnath Lux for the Royal deck, which I can do a deck list for as well. If you guys like to see that, let me know in the comments. Uh, and then I just kind of spare cards, or upgrade from the Brawl Precon spare cards, made this deck, and just kept adding to it. I've never directly bought cards for this deck, but it's just an amazing list, and I really thought you guys might like it. Um, so, I'll just get straight into the list now. So being that Corvold is obviously a sacrifice commander, being that he's two black, green, red for a legendary creature dragon, noble 4 full with flying, when he ETBs or attacks, it's sacrifice a permanent, when you sack a permanent, put one one counter on him and draw a card. So that when he attacks, that's great. The when he ETBs can sometimes not be great because we're not set up for it, but even still it's a card draw and a counter on him, so it's not the end of the world. We can often sacrifice a mana arc or even have a land to make sure he gets in, because it's way more important to have a land on the field or to have one less land on the field and call vault out than have that extra land without our commander, because he's just that impactful that a turn early could be the if difference between a win and a loss and sacrificing one land at an amazing rate to, in my opinion, especially in this deck. And so once he's out uh, obviously, the thing we'll be sacrificing is tokens, so mostly what we're making is just lots of little small 1-1s. One Cards like Everhand Overlord do this really well. Often they're a lot more, more expensive, like mana cost in this deck. Uh, 5 black black for a 6-6. Six, six. When it ETBs, you put a number of 1-1 one, one black copy creature tokens with flying into the battlefield, it equal to your devotion to black, and then beginning of upkeep you sack a creature. So the beginning of upkeep sack a creature doesn't matter, that's just a draw. Generally we have enough tokens lying around that, that doesn't even change anything at all. And the one ones generally, so it triggers off itself as well, so it's at least two. Corvold, that's three. Uh, generally, you like to play this when you get seven or eight-ish tokens off it, which isn't really hard to do. You can generally do it pretty consistently most games. Uh, so for seven mana, that's expensive, but generally it's worth it. Verdant Force, again, is a little bit different. It's a lot more uh, over time value. It's 5 green 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 for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Beginning of each upkeep, you create a 1-1, one, one, so it doesn't get immediate effect, but the next turn it will. By the start of your turn, again, you will have 4 tokens, and then 8 by your next, and then 12. So it definitely does pay off. However, you do need to make sure you can get this card out, especially early, and then you can just get the value off it, because if not, it's not worth it. Togo Goblin's Weaponsmith is also not bad. Uh, it's 200 for a 2 2. When I land ETBs, you create a colorless equipment. Um, you can attach it to something for one and tap, tap it to sack um, for one mana as well. That's somewhat relevant because it can sack itself for one mana, although you do have to uh, tap the creature, so it's generally not going to be played in this deck unless we put it on our little tokens, which we could do actually, and then 2 damage isn't uh, insignificant. However, mostly we're just going to use them to creatures effects like Corvold where you sack a permanent. We're going to get one ish trigger return, but for three mana that's not that bad. And you can also sacrifice Togo if you need to. So just generally it's a decent ability. Uh, either damage or sack fodder, or both actually. So it's just a lot of good, decent triggers. Plus I love this card. Um, I just found it's way more useful than you ever think. Another one of these big payoffs is Mycoloth, it's 3 green green for a fungus, 4-4 four, four with Devour 2, so as an ETBs you can sack it in all creatures, and then it enters the 1-1 one, one counters, equal to the amount of counters, uh, and all creatures sack, so it gives you upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one for each token on uh, Mycoloth. So you can obviously play this after, say after a turn rotation with Verdant Force or an Apparent Overlord, you can generally get 5 plus, maybe even 10 counters on this. So beginning of your next level, you'll get 10 one ones and another 10, another 10. And each of those is a card you can draw with Corvold, getting closer and closer to those win cons. Uh, so that's really that the thing, is that the reason we focus so much on token makers in this deck is because they really do just give us their value. And they almost all sort of pseudo card draw in this deck, and they're just a, a really good value point for this. So Corvold obviously sacrifices his creatures, but it's only when he attacks or ETB, so that's generally one per turn at a maximum, which is not a very good rate. So we do need lots of other effects to make sure we can trigger that ability and draw cards and make Corvold as big as possible to win and to give us the value we need to ensure that we can get the win. Ashnod's Altar is just a staple of this deck. It's amazing. It's three generic for an artifact, sack a creature, add great... Uh, 
two colourless to your mana pool. So the two the colourless doesn't particularly matter, but the two mana can be useful. This is a perfect example of a of a free outlet that also gives us value. Uh, there are some X spells in this deck, there are some big mana spells, as we just saw with Verdant Force. There's, there's just a million ways to use this mana. If we're drawing a thousand cards with Corvold, we're going to be able to play every single one of them if we have a lot of creatures with Dodge Altar. So genuinely, this card is incredible. Probably my pick for the best card in the deck. Uh, I'm always happy to draw it, even if I have no token makers in the hands, I'm incredibly happy to get it. Altar of Dementia, uh, this is a similar, I've won one game with this, uh, so it's not as it's not as flash winny as you think, but it's still a two mana artifact with a free sacrifice outlet, and whenever you sack a creature, your target player puts a number of cards equal to its uh, power from the top of the library to the graveyard, so it's a decent value, mill is obviously not particularly powerful, uh, it's really unlikely you can win with this, but you might be able to. Carry and Feeder is similar, it's a black for a 1 1, it can't block, and you can sacrifice your 1 1 counter on it. So that uh, ability is alright. Uh, I think I've actually also won a game with this. Um, only just, but you can also use all the, the buff effects we have for Corvold on the Carry and Feeder. So if it gets big, it's actually got a decent attacker alongside Corvold. Um, this is the only. The rest of the deck is just sacrifice, uh, free sacrifice outlets that don't really trigger, uh, don't really have any relevant abilities. But the fact is they're free and they're useful, so we have no problem running these. Uh, these are just possibly the best because they have additional uh, effects that are great for this deck and can win this game or give us extra value that helps us win. So I've just explained to you that we're making all these tokens and we're sacrificing them all for value. Well, we can get extra value, right? Because Corvold draws a card and gives him a 1-1 counter, so that wins us the game and gives access to all the cards in our deck, but that's not enough. We can do even more with these cards. Psychosis Crawl is 5 mana for a star star. Power and toughness with a number of cards in your hand generally isn't relevant with some of our unlimited hand effects like Reliquary Tower and uh, the other, the Mana Rock, uh, which I believe is Thought Vessel. Uh, that this can actually be relevant and it can be a pretty big attacker but the ability we're looking for is whenever you draw a card each opponent loses one life so Corvold draws us a card so with him out this makes every sack each opponent loses one life you draw a card and you get a 1-1 counter on Corvold uh, again I've won a couple games with this um, same as with cards like Zulaput Cutthroat it's one and a black for a human rogue ally whenever it or another cr or creature dies each opponent loses one you gain one the game doesn't really matter but in this deck that drain is nice uh, this can honestly probably pump out 5-10 to 10 damage a turn, which is amazing for us, just another way to get a chip our opponent's life to little down, or even kill them in certain instances, especially if they're using fog or some kind of uh, pillow fort effect, this is just great to pump through, and then Mazarek's a little bit different, but it's the same, on the same string, 3 black green for a 2-2, two -two. Legend of Kija Insect Shaman, I actually also did have a Mazarek deck at one point that was incredibly powerful, it was a bit more of a combo deck, but not really, it was just not, not bad, but whenever a player sacks a permanent, uh, put a woman counter at each creature you control. So this does also pump out our tokens, which can be important. We, if someone's blocking a go to all strategy, we can go wild with those tokens if Mazarek's out. But also what it does is it doubles up the tokens that Corvold gets. So just adding additional value to all the sacrifice triggers is great in this deck because we are sacrificing so often. And now that we're getting all these creatures, sacrificing them or getting additional value, we can't forget what Corvold does, right? He draws us that card, which is obviously an essential part of this deck, but he also gets a 1-1 counter on him. And I love attacking, uh, especially in Voltron. I think it's a great sub theme when we're draining our opponents and making lots of tokens. That's really a great way to win the game. But if our commander is a 25 25 with flying, why don't we figure out how to punch through and win the game? Uh, Footfall Crater, I think this is a really underrated card from uh, Ikoria. It's an enchant land, it has tap target creature against trample and haste in line of turn. It also has cycling one, so if you don't need it, you can get rid of it. This basically becomes a 1 mana land enchantment that effectively means uh, pay 1 mana, target creatures against trample and haste on a turn, which is a great, this is more of a budget pick for this deck, which is interesting obviously because I said no budget, however, uh, it is still just a great card, I think a lot of you should consider playing it in a lot more red decks, particularly Voltron, but anything really works, it's just making sure that Corvo can, if he dies, we can play him again, um, also we can just punch through damage if they do have flying blockers, which is rare, but someone might. And then Fistful of Flame is one in red for an instant draw card. Toe creature gains Trample and Kess plus Summer Slow for each card you've drawn this turn. So two mana instant for Trample honestly isn't bad on face value. But uh, especially because punching through is just an, a thing we really like to do in this deck with all, all these ways to get through with Corvold. Um, but also because he draws us so many cards, this can genuinely oftentimes be 20 to 30 uh extra power return which is very much overkill however still a great piece in this deck and can make a real scary piece really quickly 
That's the same as Ember Cleo. I'm sure any of you standard players remember this. Uh, it's four red red for a legendary artifact equipment with flash. It costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. When it ETBs, you can attach it to the creature you control and it gets plus one so and has double strike and travel and it can look for three. So this is perfect in this deck. Um, we can attack with Corvold and three one ones. Um, sacrifice three or play Ember Cleave, Sacrifice the three one ones for additional effect. So mill someone or make our carrion feed a big or anything I said before. If not, Corvold's out right. So we just sacrifice them all and draw cards. So let's draw three cards as well. Give make the Corvold three three bigger. Uh, and then only for two mana we give Corvold plus almost one double strike and trample. So face value, let's evaluate this, right? Let's say we had those three one ones out. We have Corvold. We have two red mana open, and Corvold is a four four. He got the one extra counter from entering, so he's a five five. This is the worst I think Embercleave is ever going to be in this deck. You attack with all your creatures. You pay two red mana. Corvold is now a six six with double strike and trample. Uh your opponent. Let's say they don't have a blocker because who would? Um, you then sacrifice the three creatures. Uh, to any effect, let's say just a Viscerous here, so you get no r real value. Corvold then gets three more counters, so Corvold's now a 9 9 with double strike and trample. So, at what effectively, what's worst case value? We hit our opponent for 18 damage with one shot off killing them with just this one card. It's an amazing effect, and that's exactly how we'd use it in this deck, and that's really what all these cards do. Just make sure Corvold gets three for damage, you can win the game because it's a great win gun. So then just some more additional value in this deck because obviously we don't get enough. Um, Skull Clamp is a generic artifact equipment, equip creature gets plus one, plus one, minus one. Whenever it dies you draw two card and it has equip one. So this is just great because then obviously, I'm sure you've all seen Skull Clamp, you know how it works. You put on a one, one it kills it and you draw two cards. Um, and you can just do this with your entire board for however much money you have. Uh, you get a draw a card which is just crazy. Um, this is pretty much the only other card draw effect in the entire deck because Corvold is genuinely that good. In my meta, we don't play Lockdown that much or Stacks effects, so you know no one's going to kill my Corvold, so the low draw doesn't really matter that much. We could focus on our theme more, um, and just Skull Clamp is that good that I think it's worth playing. Eldrazi Monuments, five generic for an artifact creature. You get what some sort have fly or plus almost one have flying and indestructible, and we give you upkeep sack a creature if you can't sack Eldrazi Monument. So the sack of creature is never going to matter. We always have a million creatures to sacrifice. The plus almost one flying and indestructible can make it out one ones into a go wide strategy, making them two two with flying and indestructible. So basically, what this means is that they're just all going to get through for damage. And if we have ten two twos, that's what twenty damage. That's great. Plus Corvold, and the indestructible is really just protection for Corvold, which is just great. And the last kind of just generic value that I'm going to go over in this deck is Helm of the Host. It's four colors for a legendary artifact equipment. We're going to come on the turn, create a, to create a token copy of a quick creature, except it's not legendary. If the creature was legendary, the token gains haste as a quick for five. So this is very expensive, but it's almost an instant game winner. Become sack a creature, draw two, put two one one channels on your core vaults. It's just incredible value. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain how this works, but just you have. Two ma you have two massive attackers, then three massive attackers, then four massive attackers, and you draw one card, then two cards, and three cards, then four cards, and it's just amazing. If this stays out, you immediately win the game, hands down. This is just an amazing game mender, as every other card in this deck. So I'm sure all throughout this video, all you've heard me saying is, and then we win the game, and then we kill someone, and then we deal 20 damage, because that's what this deck does. It's amazing. Uh, but these are some of my favorite game enders and some of the most spicy. So Kedis, Emberclaw, Familiar, one in the red for a 1-1. One, one. It has part, that's not relevant. Whenever a commander controls deals combat to an opponent, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. So this won't deal commander damage, but it will still deal regular damage. Uh, and hitting someone in the face for 21 plus damage uh, is sure to kill them all. Uh, generally this leads to some long turns where you kind of calculate this and that, which this deck does do a lot. However, it's it's all it's so much super sweeter when you win the game because you really just blast everyone and it can strike a win out of nowhere. Same with trans recognition, you don't even have to deal damage for this one. Three red red for a sorcery target creature control deals damage because power to each other creature and each opponent. This is not a board wipe, this is how we win the game. Uh, I've won the game probably five, ten times with this, just constantly winning games with all these cards. Um Corvold is not that hard to get him up to a 20 or a 30-30 and just cast this and just kill everyone immediately because no one has that much life generally, especially with cards like Zulaput Cutthroat. Just get the Rice Reborn is the same, 2 and a red, uh, it enters with X loyalty counters on it where X amount of, time, amount of times you've cast your commander from the command zone. So this might only be 1 or 2, and it's but that's not relevant. It can also be a commander that has partner, that's not relevant either. Uh, you can 
give it minus X and deals X damage to up to three targets. Again, doesn't really matter. It's never going to come into play. What does is that zero ability, which is why it doesn't matter how many times I've cast Corvold. Until your next turn, choose target creature. If that creature would deal combat to one of your opponents, it deals triple that damage instead. So this makes Corvold, the moment he comes out, you sacrifice two extra creatures and he's a one-shot kill. Um, on any player. For three mana, we create a one-shot kill. Uh, these cards are ridiculous. Uh, even though two of them are only new from Command Legends came out last year. Uh, these are incredible. I won countless games with these. These have won probably more cards than any other card in the in my entire collection. These are amazing. Must-haves for this deck in my opinion, which is part of the reason why it's so expensive. This deck is just incredible. Okay, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you kind of stuck through this non-budget deck. I know it's not even budget for some of you guys, but if you if some of you do actually watch my videos and you are a less of a budget player and you wish that I posted some videos that didn't have a budget on them, I'm sorry I won't do it often. However, here's one. This is my favorite deck. It's not at all budget. Um, it's four hundred thirty dollars. It's very expensive. I can do a budget list if you guys would like to see that as well, let me know in the comments. Um, if not, there, here's the list for the non-budget. I can do more non-budget videos if you guys really want to see it, but generally this is what I like to build. Uh, just a sacrifice deck built around making tokens, buffing Corvold and hitting people for massive damage. It's just how I love to play the game. Uh, let me guys know if you have any ideas for other videos or any decks you'd like to see. I'll make you guys a deck if you want to see it. Um, either way, thank you guys for listening so much. Please remember, like, like and subscribe. Show the video to your friends. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys all next time.